Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, we're pleased to, to welcome you to our new customer spotlight featuring the Duke Endowment. I'll be your host today, Annie Rose. I'm the Director of Foundation Strategy. And joining us today is Matt Sharp, the Director of hey. Information Technology for the Duke Endowment. Uh, today's webinar will be a short one. will be 30 minutes with uh, time for Q&A at the end. But before we get started, a few Q&A, uh, a few housekeeping items uh, that I'd like to go over. First, after the webinar, you'll receive an email with a link to the recording. Feel free to download it, share it with a friend or colleague, uh, or somebody else you know that might be interested in the topic. Uh, also, we'll be posting this presentation on our resource hub. If you haven't had a chance to visit our resource hub, you can do so at www.foundations.blackbod.com or directly through the Blackbod website. We encourage you to check it out. There are a lot of great thought leadership articles, a lot of uh, content to help support all of the wonderful work that you all are doing on a daily basis. Also, during today's conversation, feel free to use the Q&A widget on your screen at any time. I'll be uh, asking Matt questions, uh, and so if you'd like to ask a question as we move along, uh, enter it in the Q&A section, and I'll, I'll make sure to ask it either during our conversation or towards the end, we'll open up for questions. And then lastly, don't forget the social part of the conversation. Uh, you can uh, access Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn uh, to share what you're hearing today, uh, or you can uh, tweet uh, using at BlackBod FS uh, at, at any moment in time. With that, let's get started. Uh, first, with a, a warm welcome and introduction to Matt Sharp. Going hey, to how are you doing, Annie? Hi, Matt Sharp. We're so glad you're here, that you're joining us for today's session. Uh, Matt and I wanted to set the stage uh, for, for all of you. Uh, we've been working collaboratively uh, over uh, the past few years and often have that opportunity when we're in person at the TAG conference or another conference to sit and talk about items of uh, importance at our, our organizations and, and priorities, which really helped us narrow in on where we wanted to focus today's conversation. Matt has been a part of the industry and the technology information services side uh, for a number of years, uh, and he uh, is a part of the Duke Endowment, which is a, a institution that has been part of uh, supporting uh, individuals and communities in North and South Carolina uh, by supporting children, promoting health, education, educating minds, and enriching spirits. So I welcome Matt, and I welcome you, Matt, to further your introduction uh, to the, the audience today. Well, thanks, Annie. Uh, for any of you out there, it's hard to say no when Annie asks you to do uh, something that sounds sounds like a good idea. Um, and I, I like the idea of uh, your introduction that with, we're we're having a chat like uh, in between sessions at a tag conference, um, as, as we uh, do get to do sometimes. So thank you again for inviting me. And um, I I. I think you gave a great introduction for what the Duke Endowment does, and I just want to make sure everybody knows how uh, fortunate I feel to be uh, working at Duke Endowment. Um, uh, first, because of Mr. Duke's vision for improving uh, the lives of folks in the Carolinas, and he came up with this vision in 1924 and shared it with us in his uh, indenture, and we keep that close to our hearts. Um, so that we know what our founder's intent is. And uh, when we're doing our work, there's no question uh, that we're doing what he would have la uh, liked us to be doing. Um, and our trustees who guide us and keep us on the right path. And um, our president, Rhett Mabry, who's a big advocate of uh, cultural change. So while we're staying true to uh, Mr. Duke's intent and his vision, um, uh, Rhett Mabry has uh, gotten us into uh, a new culture of greater accountability and greater conflict in a friendly way 
of ideas. Um, so that's really helping us move forward. And then two more if, before we get started. Uh, our evaluation group is also uh, helping us, uh, headed by uh, Bill Bacon, to think more clearly about um, how we make our funding decisions, how we see change uh, happening in the Carolinas, and how we measure it. Um, and then our finance group, uh, where uh, Natalie Smith is, and she is the amazing uh, convener of um, coding uh, sessions, uh, of uh, workflow sessions, uh, and quality improvement in how we use our systems, particularly our grants management system. So anyway, and I'm, and I'm lucky to be part of this village, and, um, and it's definitely not none of, the, none, of our, none of our technology works on its own. Um, we, I really need the help of all the folks that are here working with me at the Duke Endowment. So what do you want to add? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Uh, I love that introduction. I love that you you uh, called out the the team uh, that you you have the opportunity to work with on a daily basis. That's wonderful. So in our conversations, we've outlined a few key areas, and I, actually they they align really well with your introduction. Um, just a few areas of key focus. Uh, for you and for the Duke Endowment over the, the coming year um, of mobility, outcomes, and communications. And um, we wanted to give you the opportunity to, to talk through those. So what are you thinking about? What, uh, why are these important to you? And so I, I thought we'd start looking at each one or talking through each topic with the first okay. one being mobility. Okay. So when it when it comes to mobility, what do, what does that mean for the foundation? What does the foundation need? What type of information are team members trying to get while they're on the road? And what are you trying to do to help support uh, giving uh, staff members mobile mobile access? Sure, and you know. Um We've actually uh, tried to go mobile in as many ways as is practical. Um, just starting out with our office, um, nobody has a desktop PC that's sitting there tied to a desk. Uh, every uh, Duke Endowment employee has a laptop that they can carry uh, with them to a conference room or to an off-site meeting or to home. Um, I thought that was an important uh, thing to, to get going early on in my um, time here at Duke Endowment. Um, the other thing is uh, employees that do uh, site visits on a fairly regular basis or are off campus. Um, we've uh, issued um, quite a few iPhones and we prefer, prefer iPhones for their stability and ease of use. Um, and then uh, a smaller subset of folks that really feel like they need to take uh, notes and uh, be connected to the internet immediately. We've uh, given um, iPads that uh, we're really enjoying. They're almost a, a laptop replacement. Um, but in all of these, the idea is um, we should be able to access uh, Duke Endowment information anytime, anywhere. I won't say on any device because we have certain devices that we feel are more reliable and more secure. Um, and um, I talked about like on site visits, you know, um, we, we have had some uh, innovative folks um, that have figured out a way to make electronic uh, site visit notes, uh, and Ashley is actually one of those uh, folks in our healthcare group, um, th that people, when they're out on a site visit, they need to know who they're talking to or when the next payment is coming, uh, what questions they need to have answered so that they can fill out their site visit um, uh, reports uh, later on. Um, some of the folks are still just uh, more comfortable on paper and um, being able to, to scribble with a pen or highlight things. Um, and some of our folks have already made a transition to, uh, to uh, mobile things. And I know um, at, as uh, technology develops, we'll have better uh, tools for interacting with uh, things like our smart, smart pad or smart tablets like an iPad. Um, that will make site visit uh, information much more accessible and easier to use for our folks. Um, and let's see, areas we could improve on, I, you know, I, I think on mobility, there's, there's, a, there's the, the challenge of being, when, when our devices are mobile, we're available 24 by 7 in some ways. 
So, and it's not just in the foundation world. Everybody in our society is having to deal with, as an individual, how 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 many of these 24-hour days am I av- immediately going to respond? You know, and under what circumstances? I mean, um, and then um, as an organization, we have had discussions about, okay, now that we have these 24-hour devices, how soon do we expect a response to an email? Um, how how often? How soon do we re- expect a response to a text message? And and what hours do we expect those response times? And we haven't come to an answer yet. We're getting closer. Um, but I think the technology is going to keep changing, and we have to keep uh, revisiting, you know, that that balance between being accessible and having a healthy work-life balance. I like that, Matt, and I like that the the um, keeping an eye on like how the technology changes, and and just making sure you're leaving the space to also evolve with it. While you were talking, I was also thinking about your grant partners and how they're accessing information. Does the topic of mobility come up with them as well? Are they on the move a lot and needing access to the, their data and information? Or is, it, is that a topic that is discussed inter- internally at the endowment? Um, you know, I, I have not heard any discussions uh, specifically about mobility with our grantees except I've observed um, how uh, flexible they are in using their tools, and they're using a lot of the same tools we are, uh, iPhones and iPads and laptops. Um, And they just have to generally, since their uh, financial resources are are tighter, they have to be – they have to make a lot more uh, compromises in terms of choosing more free and low cost technologies. And we definitely, you know, we, we want to be careful with our money too. And we, we tend to look at what we already have, you know, like our office 365 suite involves so many tools at a reduced price. So we, we tend to favor those ahead of what might be uh, put on the Gartner uh, quadrants, you know, for the best of breed. So we always start looking uh, at free or low cost stuff, and I think that's what our our grantees are generally doing. That's great. Last summer, I uh, was leaving for a holiday with my family, and I forgot uh, to apply for a a, a Blackbod Care to our community grant. Uh, if if you volunteer, so we have a philanthropic program here. And I ended mm-hmm. up in the back seat of the, the family car applying uh, to our gifts online site uh, using my, my mobile phone. Now, I will admit it wasn't the best application I've ever submitted. Uh, however, just being able to actually accomplish that, you know, while I was on the move kind of um, made me rest easy while I was on holiday. So thank you, Matt. Yeah. So that's I was something say, just you know, for that's- us. Yeah. Yeah, I I really think um, that's that's the silver lining to this 24-hour, you know, 24 by 7 uh, availability with all of our mobile devices is a lot of times we can get some form of access to something we need so that we can take care of a sick child or we can go on a vacation and know that the building hasn't burned down or, you know, that there isn't some question that we could answer that, that's holding up the group. Um, so that is a silver lining. It, it, for me as a tech guy, you know, I want all of our stuff up 24 by seven. So I'm monitoring it on some level 24 by seven. And, and when I'm, when I'm officially a- out, it makes me feel good to know that I can at least check to see if things are, are still going well. Yeah. Great. So let's move on to our next topic that we've highlighted of outcomes, and you know that I love to talk about this topic, and I've talked to many of you about this topic (laughs) for a while, and the Duke Endowment has been focused around outcomes, impact, evaluation for a while. We've made a very strong commitment to to that. Um, What would would you say, uh, what is happening at the Duke Endowment when it comes to outcomes and evaluation where you focus, uh, what's, in, what's important to you right now around collaborating with your, your grant partners, uh, what do you have to share about outcomes? 
Well, uh, we are so fortunate because um, our our whole organization is committed to doing the hardest part of that evaluation work uh, now, uh, and we've been doing it over the course of years, and that's uh, sitting down in rooms and discussing what what our goals are, um, how we think um, the, the, the uh, problems that are out there, which ones are, are problems that we uh, have a chance to have an effect on, um, and then thinking through the, the system of how positive change happens on any given issue that we're involved in. And none of this is technology stuff. This is all evaluation uh, stuff that Bill Bacon and his group are heading up. But um, the, you know, uh, it's it's like it's like a group therapy uh, session. I've been lucky enough to be in um, some uh, working groups when when our program areas are talking about this. Uh, you know, the the technology solution is going to come sooner or later, and it uh, a lot of it has already started. Um, but but the hard thinking is so much more important than the technology uh, because we we have to know you know, we have to get to the point where we know what kind of data we want to collect and how often we want to collect it and where we're going to collect it. A lot of the data that we will want to use to understand our grant making isn't necessarily going to come directly from a grantee. It may come from census data or organizations that collect data on crime rates or poverty or uh, child abuse um, and um, so thinking through the, the problem um, as a group and struggling with the issues means that the technology, you know, when the, ch the chances are that the technology is going to have a chance to really fit in and give the right answers or give useful answers for people. Um, the cart before the horse would be trying to implement some technological solution for gathering outcomes data, but, but not not being clear about what it is and how often and, and how we're going to aggregate it and report it. So the, the hard work is where we are right now in, in just thinking through the problems. Okay. And what about with the working with the, your grant partners? Are outcomes, uh, is, is Bill, are Bill and Teen finding that outcomes are at the our front and center for those organizations that you're funding, or is there also an education com component around outcomes uh, for well, for those grant partners? Mm -hmm. I think I think you're you're right that um, I think grantee organizations understand that not just foundations but also you know public funders and corporate funders are very interested in outcomes. So they already it's already been on their radar screen for years. Um, and um, what, what, um, what Bill and his group have been able to do is when there's a, when there's a, a defined enough cluster of grantees, um, we've, we've worked with them to, to build uh, tools so um, with, say, one cluster of grantees, we worked to build some tools to uh, collect uh, information from grantees. Uh, um, uh, we, have, we have some um, healthcare grantees where we were collecting okay. information from them that showed how their organization was performing, how they were interacting with the general public, um, what their uh, price sensitivity was on various uh, health services they were offering, and with Bill uh, teaming up um, to create a site where they could report this data, um, the whole uh, group of grantees, the cluster of grantees, was able to compare their performance on, on outcomes or metrics that made sense to them and were of really you know, clear business use to them, see where they fit among their uh, peers, um, and then um, uh, we were able, or Bill was able, uh, and the healthcare group was able to pair up high-performing uh, grantees up with uh, maybe lower-performing grantees to see if they could develop a mentor-mentoring uh, relationship to, uh, to come up with some improvements. Um, I think data can be really powerful, and to get really good data, specifically in this situation, those grantee organizations had to trust each other enough to um, really understand the clear definitions that Bill and his group had put out for each of the data points. 
um, and report truthfully and on time so that the peer mm -hmm. uh, comparisons would work. Um, and uh, we've been able to have them come on site. We're, we're in a beautiful new building here in Charlotte um, um, and where we can convene uh, these uh, grantees where they can compare uh, their, their stories, where they can hear some educational information about how they might do things differently and how they, they can interact with our uh, healthcare uh, program team to see uh, what resources are available. So data can be really powerful. Um, when you add data and trust, that means the data will be even more true and more useful. And then uh, getting together uh, people together in face-to-face -to -face can uh, uh, really result in improved uh, organizations and performance. I love that data and trust, right? That will yep. help us. <laughs> evolve and understand, you know, what's working, what isn't, and, and being able to make those shifts so we can get to a broader applicability of, of what is working. So yep. thank you for yep. sharing that, Matt. So our final topic, and I think they all kind of start to blend together, our final topic was around communication. So I think a lot about, you know, mobility here, like how do you get access to the communication I think about outcomes and impact and that data out. How do you tell that story? Well, in, in communications, right? And it, in, you, you and your answers have weaved through how important internal communications are, external communications are. And I, I just wanted to ask you a general question about both the Duke Endowment and then the foundation space as a whole when it comes to communication. What do you see changing? Where do you see the priority right now for, for the foundation, for your endowment? And, and where do you see communication going over the next few years? Yeah, and, and so answering from, a, from an IT guy perspective, I, I think uh, on communications, what I'm thinking about is how our machines uh, talk to each other, how we transfer um, information up to uh, reporting organizations, how our grantees uh, transfer information to us and to clearinghouses. And, um, and I, I, I can, I'm, I'm hopeful and I, and I think, uh, I think things are only going to get better in terms of machines being able to uh, seamlessly transfer information so that um, we don't have as much time lag between an event happening or a, a grant happening and being able to share that it's happened and what we're learning from it. Um, because I, I think our broader culture is expecting more transparency and more um, timeliness when it comes to information. So I, I think having our machines uh, being able to transfer things that we agree on um, uh, much more easily is going to help. Um, it also though introduces this idea that uh, security is going to continue to be more important because uh, right, right now a person makes a decision about are we going to release the information about this grant right now in a press release or are we going to uh, say how much we funded this organization in how many years are we, are we going to wait and do it a little bit later. Um, Right now, technology can make all of the information about almost everything that happens in our foundation uh, available immediately. But just because we can doesn't mean we want to because we haven't developed all the systems, you know, or the human side of, of vetting information and, and trusting uh, sources. Um, and, and once we turn it over to computers to just talk to each other, then uh, security, like I said, becomes a lot more important because we don't want things to flip out inaccurately or before they're, uh, they're, before they're okay, um, and we certainly don't want to have incorrect information somehow getting into the stream. Great answer. Any other um, feedback or anything else to say around some of the tool uh, well, communication yeah. tools? That, yeah. Yeah, I just I want to sneak in something about um, how video conferencing has just taken off at the Duke Endowment, and I, I have a feeling it's probably taken off uh, at a lot of other organizations too. Um, with with the economy picking up, there's a lot more traffic on the road all over our country, and um, there's something about um, getting in the car and driving for two hours or four hours. It's just 
gotten a lot less appealing uh, for folks. So uh, our site visits are always in person, um, but a lot of the work um, that our staff can do before a site visit or after a site visit, we can achieve uh, with video conferencing. And we started out, you know, being very careful because we didn't want to have something go wrong and, and folks uh, lose confidence in it. But we've built up a good uh, user base with video conferencing, and we've got a lot of uh, video conferencing deputies out there that will help convene uh, sessions and get people up and rolling. And it's really saved a lot of time and made a lot more uh, efficient use use of our time and, and lessened the wear on their bodies and, and cars. And so that's uh, something I feel really good about. That that's incredible, and that's something we're we're very focused on. I I most I spend most of my day on camera with staff from all over the world, right? So that's mm -hmm. uh, that's where where we're all uh, transitioning to. Uh, so so Matt, we came to the the end of our our questions. I'm going to leave the question uh, box, the Q and A box, open in case anyone has any questions in our last two minutes together that they want to <laughs> ask Matt. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed our fireside chat, our conference side chat today, Matt. I think these topics are not only important to you and the Duke Endowment, but they're really important to everyone. I think it's just helpful to understand, you know, what you're thinking about, uh, what's important to you, and that will change the next time, you know, we, we talk, you'll, you will evolve. And, adopt new tools, new practices, and so it's just an opportunity for us all to share what's happening, and we really appreciate that you let us be your, your first spotlight. I don't see any questions oh. coming in. Oh, maybe I do. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, I was going to say, well, thanks again for, uh, for having me, um, and uh, we've got plenty of good stuff in the pipeline, so uh, unless uh, – I, I, I think there's going to be some I, good stuff to I, share. <laughs> I, I do. I think you're right. I have a few questions that came in. If, if I have one that I'm going to ask you, um, Matt, do you have any thoughts on AI, so artificial intelligence, and yep. how that, that may impact the, the funder space? Yeah. Um, so, right, I mean, I've got Alexa with me uh, every day. Um, <laughs> Right, Alexa, are you there? Oh, she's not going to respond. To, oh. um, <laughs> um, you know, I, I think AI, is uh, artificial intelligence, is going to be something that's going to take a lot of the um, transactional uh, life, day-to-day -day life of, of people in our society and obviously our foundations and grantees. It's going to simplify that, so keeping track of your your calendar and keeping track of where you are and uh, keeping track of um, when you might be able to meet up with somebody. I think artificial intelligence is going to do a lot of that uh, transactional management for us. Um, and, and creepy seems to, to be the adjective my daughter loves to use and lots of other people like to use when they think about AI uh, managing these parts of our life. But um, uh, it, it's, Number one, it's already underway, and number two, it it really can free people up to focus, you know, in our foundation world, focus on our grant making, focus on the in the uh, topic areas, and focus on interacting with people, and uh, let AI keep track of uh, your calendar and your and your phone and where you're supposed to be. Um, so I think it, that's only going to benefit us and make that 24 by seven um, access much more manageable. Great, thanks for answering that, Matt. And for other questions that came through, we'll, we'll send them to Matt uh, to, to follow up on. Uh, we do appreciate your time today, Matt, and for everybody on the line with us, we do appreciate that you took time out of your busy days. If anyone else is interested in sharing your story, a spotlight in the future, um, Matt got to be our first, but we'd love to, to hear from you on topics uh, that, that you'd like to, to discuss. So, Matt, thank you. I look forward to Great. the next time we bump into each other at a conference or, or we connect around our priorities and, and where technology is, is going to help support them. Great. Thanks, Amy.
Okay. Have a great day, everyone.